hello gracious friends and welcome back to my channel um i don't know what i'm going to title this but what i want you to know is that you need to let go and let god take charge let go of all those plenty planning sometimes because the lord's plan is always the perfect one if you're an og you've been on this channel you know that i have never ever dreamt of getting the graduate visa i did not want it i never thought i would get it but i got one and it was it was too quick for me <laughs> I got my visa in less than two days less than two days i submitted my application on a sunday by 21 45 that's 9 45 pm and the following tuesday by 12 05 pm in the afternoon i got a successful um, extension of my visa via the graduate route that's exactly one day 14 hours 20 minutes <laughs> what are you saying that was how quick it was i was shocked because of course after applying they told me oh you're gonna get um uh, your decision in the next eight weeks so they put the date of the eight weeks so they calculated from the day of application to eight weeks um don't contact us we would contact you you know so they know how to um like track the visa or like when we were doing our student visa you could track to see where it was they also have to track so just wait for them to contact you if they need more information or any evidence they will contact you also be very careful when you're filling the form two things i want to point out is that if you've had some medical care or medical issues and you've taken some treatment and you've had to pay or something of that nature please document everything you're going to be asked if you've done any medical treatment you're going to be asked if you have done if you had to pay and if you had to pay you need evidence that you made the payment so please keep all your medical treatments um documented if you had any or if you have any before your um visa application okay and if you've gotten any form of scholarship be sure of the conditions of the scholarship because you know some of these um, scholarship bodies like commonwealth ECOWAS, and the rest you know you they give you this scholarship with a condition that after your studies you have to return maybe to your home country and spend a few days or a few years practicing what you have studied before you can move so there's this contract so be sure of the contract you had signed because you will need if you've gotten a scholarship you need to give them a letter of consent to show that the body that sponsored you for that scholarship actually permits that you go on and get the graduate visa so i think these are very um important points i i noted while filling the form another difference i noticed is that when i was filling my student visa i was asked the countries i had visited the last 10 years but for the graduate visa i was asked for the last five years okay and i think pretty much why my own decision came easily was because i didn't have any complications okay when I say complications, like there's a way you fill your form and there'll be too many things, so many com complex stuff. Like when it comes to have I ever left the UK since I came in, I hadn't, you know, because you're supposed to feel where and where you've gone to if you have left the UK. So since I entered the UK, I haven't left the UK. So the way my form was filled, I wasn't asked to provide any evidence. So I didn't upload any documents. So it was very straightforward. So I'm not saying that yours will be two days, but I'm just saying I got my decision in less than two days. I was wild, like, because I actually needed it. Now, that brings me to the point I want to make. I never, ever, ever wanted the graduate visa. But here are some of the reasons I have found out from my experience why you might consider picking a graduate visa. You don't have to. I think other than the fact that it extends your stay, because if you get a skilled visa, you start to count your, your stay. If you're planning to spend um, some time here and get your PR, your permanent residence, it starts counting when you get a skilled work visa. Um, but in this case, if you start with a graduate visa, you're most likely now looking at the 10 years, um, the 10 year route. Because by the time you're done with your two years, even when you get 
not five years sometimes you're almost at 10 years if you know what i mean but what i'm trying to say at this point is the fact that a lot of us are avoiding that visa is because we do not also know what it brings now i took the decision to go get my graduate visa for a major reason i had about a month and a half still left of my student visa but i did that because i realized that a lot of people i can guarantee you this once they want to give you the job and they see that your visa is student visa sometimes they just say you do not qualify but it's that student visa that is pushing them away so there is a student visa is detrimental in a way you know the 20 hours and people are trying to be very careful so to open up more opportunity for yourself it will be good if you've graduated you know after your graduation you have extra four months if after the first two months you have not gotten a job i personally would advise you if you have the funds and you can afford it please pick up your graduate visa apply for it get your graduate visa then companies will be coming for you there are some companies that will even come for you when you are a student and they have graduated and they will tell you that they will sponsor you but first of all you need to pick up your graduate visa so they do sponsor but they don't want to sponsor you yet they want you to pick up your graduate visa and then you know, kind of like probation they want to even see what you're doing are you even worth the amount because this certificate of sponsorship is not free the company pays for it you're not supposed to pay for certificate of sponsorship you're not supposed to pay for it the company pays for it i know why i'm making that statement if you that are hearing it you also know why i'm making that statement it's everywhere it's everywhere so let's be guided and do the right things now back to what i was saying when you now get this post graduate as the former name postgraduate visa is now called the graduate visa post study visa rather post study work visa that was the former name it's now called the graduate visa but when you get this graduate visa your your options are so much you will not be the one doing like you know what i mean they now them go they rush you <laughs> and them go come they rush you so you now need to be the one saying okay because so i took it i got i got an opportunity but they can't sponsor me immediately okay so but i know that in the long run i might get i will get sponsored not might but i needed to get my foot in and so i took that bold step to get my graduate visa now i know some people will try to get the graduate visa i needed it urgently so i didn't even do for my family and that's part of why it got faster or it was approved faster if you're to do with your family unlike in my case where i had to just use an app so there's an app that you will use to prove your brp link or something like that to access the chip or your brp link and directly send your identity to them so it's like you're confirming your identity through the app i will just put the icon of the app on the screen while editing this video for you to know the app um it's called uk id check and immigration or something like that so with that app directly automatically sends my identity to them i do not need to go to a visa center to capture again or to have my biometrics captured however this process does not work for children so if you have children you have to take them physically to capture so the scenarios of people i have spoken to what happens is that their decision is delayed they cannot grant you your graduate visa if your children have not been captured because they want to grant it to you as, as a whole i don't know if you get my point so those are some of the things that might slow yours down and the other things i've mentioned before some complexities your travels your medical treatment your sponsor scholarship if any and stuff like that that said advantages of picking the visa like i said before more options for yourself secondly it's not that bad though because of course you have two years extra to settle and get your dream job you're not hopping into any job because you want the scholarship because what happens is that sometimes we take a job we don't like that we're not sure we can do just because we want 
that scholarship urgently. It, it takes off some kind of pressure of you jumping into the wrong job. Like me, I've worked in a toxic environment before and I will never, ever want to repeat that in my life. And so this is giving me room to, you know, test the waters. Do I like where I am? Do I want to move? Because when somebody has given you certificate of sponsorship, they like kind of caged you. You don't want to, even if you don't like the job, because they are the reason you are staying in the UK. You will just be, you know, managing, 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 and maybe even enter depression, but you don't know, you know. So it's another advantage. The last but not the least is the fact that some of these things are not reversible. If you now get COS from a company and you don't want to now work, you cannot come back and say you want to get graduate visa. You can only get it. It's, it's a once in a lifetime. <laughs> Let me put it once in a lifetime opportunity. Let me put it that way. And that's why when you get the graduate route visa, you're being told that you cannot study on a course with a student sponsor. There are very few occasions or courses where you can study again. And that's why in one of my videos, I remember that was that was something I wasn't sure of because I had not experienced it, but I, I read it somewhere. And there was this guy that kept going back and forth with me, arguing with me that, no, you can study. The conditions that you use in studying is very stringent because they don't want you to go through the student route again, study and come and collect and graduate. graduate. No, they don't, they, they don't want you to go through the student route. So whatever, whatever course or thing you're going to study in the UK must not be something that is linked to the student route whereby you finish studying and get graduate with Samba. No. So that's, I have read. And, I, I, okay. Let me read it. Let me read it directly from my approval letter. There are do's and don'ts when you get yours, you will see. But they said, you cannot study at a state-funded school. You cannot undertake further study with a student sponsor on a course which will meet the requirements of the student route. All other forms of study are permitted subject to the conditions regarding the academic technology approval scheme as set out in the immigration rules and all stuff like that. But they don't, anything that will meet the requirements of the student route, you cannot. It's not that you now go and do students, you go and do another master's after the graduate visa. Now go to graduate visa, but you can't, it's not, it's not cyclic like that. So you can seize that opportunity use it and mess it and do the right thing i said i should bring you to this good news because i know I, I i gave you the good the bad and the ugly and i think the only good i stated was i gives you more room but not just more room gives you more opportunities it also allows those people that are running away from your student visa that you know, it's like some people are looking at that student visa like ah this one has leprosy you know the way they avoid people with leprosy that's how some people avoid it so please um if my personal advice if your visa is remaining less than a month, who would really who would really want to take you? Miracles they happen. You can you can get your sponsorship in one day, two days, yeah. But realistically, I've seen the process of documentation after you get a job and all. You don't want to be on all that and then your visa expires on you. <laughs> you know what that means. But you need to or make sure you've applied and extended your visa before the expiration date of your visa. One thing to note is that if you apply, like for example, I applied over a month and a half plus before my expiration. So I've lost a month and a half because my new expiration date will now be based on the day I applied. So they will now count two years from the approval date. So two years, exactly two years from the approval date as against two years from my one, one and a half months afterwards. I don't know if you get the point. You get it. But that's... Um, Everything that has an advantage, you see, has a disadvantage. So you need to just wait, weigh your options, decide if it works for you, decide which is better for you, and go for it. And at this point, I'm going to just end this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it helpful. I hope it helps you make a better decision. And I'm going to see you in my next video. But remember, you need to stay graceful for me. Okay? I love you. Bye.